Hey everyone, in our last tutorial, we explored the building blocks of PyTorch, tensors, gradients, and activation functions. Today we are taking an exciting step forward. We are going to build our very first neural network with PyTorch. But here's what makes this tutorial special. We won't just be copying and pasting code. Instead, we are going to understand why each piece matters and how everything fits together. Think of it like building a house. We will look at each component, understand its purpose, and then connect everything to create something amazing. Before we dive into the code, let's start with a crucial question. What exactly is a neural network? Imagine you're teaching a child to recognize animals. At first, they might look for simple features. It has four legs, it has fur, it makes a barking sound. As they learn more, they combine these simple observations to make more complex decisions. Neural networks work in a remarkably similar way, and that's exactly what we will explore today. Neural networks are powerful computational systems that excel at finding patterns in data. Think of them as mathematical models that learn from examples, much like how we learn from experience. What makes them special is their ability to handle complex tasks through a relatively simple architecture. At the heart of every neural network are neurons, also called nodes. These are the basic processing units that make everything work. Each neuron takes numerical inputs, processes them using mathematical functions, and produces an output. The real power comes from how these neurons work together. Let me show you how a neural network is structured. Imagine you are building a system to classify images. The network is organized into distinct layers, each with its own role. First, we have the input layer. This is where our raw data enters the network. For images, this could be the pixel values. Each input neuron represents one piece of information, like the brightness of a single pixel. Next comes the hidden layers. These are where the magic happens. The neurons in these layers process information from the previous layers and transform it in increasingly sophisticated ways. Early hidden layers might detect simple features like edges or colors, while deeper layers combine these to recognize more complex patterns. We can stack multiple hidden layers to handle more complicated tasks. Finally, we reach the output layer. This layer gives us our results, whether that's a single number for predictions, like housing prices, or multiple values for classification tasks, like identifying objects in images. Now, what makes these layers work together? The key is in the connections between neurons. Each connection has a weight, a number that determines how strongly one neuron influences another. These weights are crucial because they are what the network adjusts as it learns. Let's talk about how this learning actually happens. The process is called backpropagation, and it's quite clever. The network starts with random weights and gradually improves them through training. Here's how it works. First, during what we call the forward pass, data flows through the network. Each layer applies its weights and functions, eventually producing a prediction. We then compare this prediction to the correct answer and calculate how far off we were. This is our loss or error. Next comes the backpropagation. The network analyzes its error and works backwards, calculating how each weight contributed to the mistake. Using calculus, specifically the chain rule, it figures out how to adjust these weights to do better next time. Finally, an optimizer uses this information to update the weights. It takes small steps in the right direction, carefully balancing between learning from mistakes and not overreacting to them. This entire process repeats many times, with the network seeing all the training data multiple times. Each complete pass through the data is called an epoch. With each epoch, the network typically gets better at its tasks gradually finding the right weight values to make accurate predictions. That's the essence of neural networks. Simple components working together in a structured way, learning through repeated practice and gradual improvement. In our next section, we will see how PyTorch makes it easy to implement these concepts in code. Now that we have got a solid understanding of neural networks, let's explore PyTorch. 
PyTorch stands out among deep learning frameworks for a key reason, it's dynamic. This means it constructs its computational pathways as your code runs, making it both flexible and easy to debug. The cornerstone of PyTorch is the NN.module class. It's the starting point for any neural network you will build. Let me explain what makes it so powerful. When you create a neural network, by inheriting from this class, you get several essential capabilities automatically. First, it handles parameter management for you. Every weight and bias in your network is tracked automatically. You don't need to manage them manually. The module also makes it simple to move your entire network from different computing devices. Want to run your model on a GPU for faster training? One simple command moves everything, the model, its parameters, and even your data to the appropriate device. Another valuable feature is the ability to save and load models. This means you can train a network, save its state, and come back to it later. It's particularly useful when you want to share models or continue learning from a previous checkpoints. Finally, this module includes built-in modes for training and evaluation. This is crucial because neural networks often behave differently during training versus when they are making predictions. With a simple mode switch, your network automatically adjusts its behavior appropriately. In the next section, we will see how to put these features to work as we build our first neural network in PyTorch. We will create a complete model step by step using these building blocks to create something that can actually learn from data. Let me show you the complete roadmap of what building a neural network involves. Device setup, preparing our computing environment, model creation, defining our neural network structure, then data preparation, getting our data ready for training, then training setup, setting up loss functions and optimizers, finally training loop teaching our network to learn. Today, we will focus on steps one and two, laying the foundation for everything else. Okay guys, so here's my VS Code setup. The first thing we need to do is, as usual, import some module. As you can see, I'm importing Torch, uh, and here I'm importing actually different functionalities of Torch. Uh, so let's run it. Okay, so before we start building, we need to make sure we are using the right computing resources. PyTorch can run either on CPU or GPU. And if you're using a Mac with Apple Silicon, there's a special GPU framework called MPS. I have defined these two functions, check MPS. This function will check if MPS is available. So if you're running this VS Code on your Mac Apple, Apple Silicon chip, which supports GPU. And the second one is a get device function, which will uh, check if you're either using uh, Apple Silicon MPS or CPU. So just run this thing and you can see here, I'm actually using MPS. So uh, in my code, when I will train neur a neural network, I will be using a GPU in my Apple Silicon. Okay, so now we, we build a simple neural network model here. When building neural networks in PyTorch, we follow a consistent pattern. Every PyTorch model has an NN.module uh, class. So it inherits from an NN.module class. It has, a, has an init uh, method to define layers, how many layers, and it has a forward method to specify the data flow. Just run it and it will create a simple model. Okay, so let's break down what's, ha what's happening. The input layer has two features. The hidden layer has five neurons and we are defining only one hidden layer and the output layer has only one um, output. For the activation, we are using ReLU function. In my previous tutorial, I defined the ReLU function, if you remember. The ReLU function is helpful because it helps neural network learn complex patterns. You will use, you will use this uh, same structure, inheritance from NN.module, layer definition, and forward pause for every PyTorch model you build from simple to complex. In our next tutorial, we will see how we can use this simple neural network to learn a binary classifier. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.